you know, you ask people, tell me your vision. Most people have to stop and think, do I, do I have a vision? <laughs> if I asked you today, tell me your vision, would you hesitate? You go, Let's see, I think my vision. Well, you know, you can tell what your vision is by listening to what you talk about. Listening to what you talk about. You're already talking about it. So your passion is going to come out of your mouth. And the problem is, and the reason why people spend five hours a day watching television is they have no passion for anything. They've been dumbed down to the point of just being content and not believing they can do anything, right? There was a survey taken about uh, travel. It was in Forbes magazine. It said 85% of people desire to travel. 60% already have the places they want to see listed. But <laughs> 11% have never traveled out of the state they were born in. 54% have never visited more than 10 states. 13% have never flown on an airplane. 40% have never left the country. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. They had the desire, but they never did it. That's interesting. Well, here's what I say about that survey. They had a desire, but, you know, your, your desire has to be bigger than your butt. Right? <laughs> That's how it is. I met a man on a plane once. We were talking. We began to chit-chat a little bit. And, you know, we, what do you do? What do you do? And so he says, I own a bakery. Uh, he said, it's in Boston. You know, I just left my corporate job. I just started it. Uh, this is its second year in business. I said, well, how's it going, you know? And we have bakeries where I live at. You know, they make the wedding cakes and the cookies and things. He said, well, second year, we just finished our second year. We did 20 million. I about dropped my cup of Coke. I said, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. You, this is your second year in business. You did $20 million in a bakery? He said, yeah. He said, no, I, didn't, I didn't open my bakery to make the wedding cakes, cookies. So I started my bakery to, to deal with corporations and big companies. I started my bakery to bake big things. See, he didn't start his bakery to make a living. He started his bakery to change his life. So let me ask you, are you making, are, are you making a living or are you living? Are you making a living or are you living? All about acceleration. If you're really going to go for it, you got to make some changes. So I want to mention these. We've, I've mentioned this before, but I felt the Holy Spirit say we need to cover this again. Have any guys in here work on machinery? I mean, you're a mechanic and work on machinery, or maybe you have tractors and things. Uh, have you ever seen those gigantic screwdrivers as heavy? I think these you know, big, long ones. You ever seen those real heavy screwdrivers? You have seen them, right? Now I have a nice watch on. And let's say that I wanted to work on it. Would that big, giant, heavy screwdriver, could I work on it? Probably tear my watch up, right? If I was going to work on a watch, how big is that screwdriver? You ever seen those little, they're about that big. It's a little dinky little screwdriver, you know. Or you work on your glasses. They have this little, you go into glass, or they sell glasses. They get the little screwdriver out, you know. If they came out and said, set your glasses down on the floor there. All right. <laughs> That's not going to work, is it? No. So, so many people are motivated by what they see instead of the effectiveness of what they're doing. I call it going for great and missing significance. And this is really the greatest temptation in our culture is the media broadcasts so many things that are great that we get so distracted. And when you become distracted, you become confused. How many have found that out? You go to your phone, you got, here's your, you're going to look for this one item and an hour later, you haven't even gone there once and you find that you've, you're so confused. Now you've got 12 things swirling through your mind and you never did go back to the thing you were going to get done, right? So distractions bring confusion. So I remember I, I, as a hunter, you know, I was going to try duck hunting. I was a squirrel hunter back in, you know, back in, as a kid, high school, junior high. But I would see these ducks fly over. I knew, you know, I knew I had the magazines. And I said, well, maybe I'll try. So I thought, well, what do you do? You got to buy decoys, right? I, that's what the magazine said. So I went down to whatever it was. I think 
some store down, I can't remember, but bought uh, maybe 10 decoys. There was a little pond out where we were squirrel hunting. I saw ducks once in a while. So I, one morning, my friend and I went down there and threw the decoys in there and sat a while, nothing happened. And I got bored. And so I wandered down to a little creek there and began to look for squirrels. And as I was down there, I saw this, this flock of ducks circle the pond and come into land. And I was excited. How many are excited when you see potential in front of you? You see an opportunity, right? And so I was excited, and this pond was perfect because it was built up by a dam, you know, and so I could sneak up on the pond without the ducks seeing me because I could come over that dirt embankment and I could bushwhack them, right? <laughs> so, so that's what I did. I come up over that pond, had my, my a double barrel 20 gauge, and I snuck up over and peeked over, and sure enough, the water had about 20 ducks on it. Man, I thought this was great. And then I noticed that these ducks, but in the midst of these ducks, there's these big ducks. And I thought, well, I'm like, I know what I, I got two shots. I got a double barrel. I'm going to shoot one while it's on the water. And then as they take off, I'll drop a second one. I'll have me a good meal. So the big ducks are out there and the small ducks. So I, I take careful aim at the big duck and I shoot and then they all take off. And I shoot again. I miss. And then I look back at the one I shot and amazingly, it flipped on its side and was sinking. <laughs> All of a sudden, I realized I'd shot my own decoy. <laughs> Isn't that what we do? You get all excited about an opportunity, and you, you're not paying attention to what's happening. And so that was a great shot. It's a great shot, but it wasn't a significant shot. You can't eat plastic. A lot of energy wasted. It's a great shot. Let me tell you about the great shot, how I snuck up. <laughs> but it wasn't significant. See, the definition of great is being above something you compare it to, bigger, better than something you compare it to. That was a great shot. But significance means having a major effect. And the word effect means having the ability to produce results. So it was a great shot, looked great, great story, but it did not produce the results that I needed. It wasn't significant. And so what the enemy wants to do is get you all enamored with all the great things, everything that looks good and everything be good and make you feel good and trying to get you to be great. For what reason? Really, what you need to be focused on is significance. Getting done what needs to get done and getting the assignment done and being focused and not distracted, right? Come on now, is that right? We've got work to do. So write this down. Don't take the decoy. The enemy is trying to decoy your energy and your life out of your assignment. Don't take the decoy. 